Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from pretty obviously not the Khmer Score studio. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, with me uh, not being in the studio, so the uh, the sound quality might be slightly different. So yeah, just in advance, thank you for bearing with me, uh, trying to do my best to kind of work with the current circumstances and just uh, yeah make this work. Make sure I you know get to still uh, make the episodes I love to do. And uh, yeah, here we go. So yeah, jumping into it, let's talk about a blog apog blog apog that too blog atog post. There we go <laughs> from Mark Rosewater, or I should say, ask to Mark Rosewater and Mark's response and just. Oh gosh, where um, I don't think this helped. Uh, I think Mark was probably trying to help with the discussion, but I don't think this helped. And I think, in fact, I think this really hurt um, wizards and just kind of the perception even further on uh, kind of kind of the, the greed that has been going on over the past couple of years with wizards and just I mean I should say Hasbro slash wizards because it's been pushed by Hasbro obviously, but but it just. This just seems, let's read it first and then, yeah, I should be giving my opinion, so let's jump into it. So, uh, Gabe Campos89 uh, asked, I'd like to give the feedback that I think there is some dissonance, there is some dissonance in making a set for the Commander public at a premium price point. Commander is a format that gives life to often ignored cards, underdogs, and unplayable weird subsets. It was built as an alternative to higher price points. The fact that Staples got pricer is a bug, not a feature in my opinion. Thus the premium price point for the set, I feel drives the main target audience away, not towards the set. Thanks for listening. So yeah, really quick, uh, Commander Masters, uh, from what I've been hearing has been a pretty big flop and the price points on the set and the pre-cons were pretty absurd. So um, yeah, let's see what uh, Mark had to say about this. This prompts the question that I'm honestly interested to hear all of your opinions on. We could make a commander focused product at the same price as a premier set, but it would have to be the same power level as a premier set. Is that something you would purchase? Um, okay. So kind of breaking this down, like what in the world does power have to do with price point? Why are those two things kind of intertwined now? I mean, Wizards not coming out and really actually just talking about like, oh, if we're going to put more expensive cards in there, you need to actually pay for those expensive cards. That's basically what they really are saying, but they don't want to actually just say that because they don't really want to say like, oh yeah, we know how much these things are. We actually, you know, put exactly the amount of right, you know, price point in there to get just enough draw, but we don't want to ruin our, you know, reprint equity. We don't want to actually destroy our value of our cards. We want to keep those cards expensive because we need to keep some more expensive so that we can then, you know, in a future product, utilize, you know, a card, you know, Fierce Guardianship. Let's say that one didn't get reprinted. I guess I don't know why I'm bringing up an example that didn't get reprinted. There's plenty that did, I guess. Okay, Mana Crypt. Mana Crypt is one that did not get reprinted in Commander Masters, even though it's a very popular card and very expensive card in Commander, okay? So that one wasn't reprinted. Neither was Ristic Study, but uh, Commander Masters, you know, didn't have it, but let's see in the future. I, I could pretty much guarantee you, I guess I can't guarantee you, but. I bet Mana Crypt sees a reprint in, well, uh, Modern Masters uh, 3, I think, or Modern, uh, whatever the one is, the, the Modern Horizons 3. The one's coming out in, I believe, a year or so. So that one, probably will see a reprint there because Wizards want you to go buy that set. So they put a, you know, rare card, you know, a very rare card in that one that's going to be incredibly expensive and a draw for you to go get it. Same thing with Ristic Study. We've already seen that it wasn't in Commander Masters, and yet they've got these alternative art versions in Wilds of Eldraine. So it's just like... Ugh, you know, Wizards, it's, you're going everywhere without actually saying it that, hey, we're not going to give you the value that you might want. Again, like Commander is a format that has all these cards that, you know, are getting more and more expensive because it's a very popular, it's the most popular format in Magic, right? It's the most popular format. It's the, it's a really fun format. It also, it's one that can have some really crazy cards. Yeah, but it can also have some also some supply and demand issues as well because of just how kind of some of the cards in Commander can't be reprinted anywhere else, right? You can't have them reprinted just in your standard Premier sets, but you can have them reprinted in a product that is specifically made for Commander, but essentially you are saying that, hey, yeah, we're not gonna give you essentially all that value unless you're willing to pay for it. And also just kind of the weird thing about this is you're also saying that like, hey, um, you did say that, you know, like the, the, the 
product is at premium or whether the product is premium for Commander Masters, but the pre-cons were never confirmed to be premium, right? Like I, I did an episode a little while back on, I can't remember what I called it essentially, but basically that, you know, Wizards knows that they're wrong, I think is what I called it essentially, because they do. They, they, they know that they cannot actually really answer these and be completely upfront and honest about this with, hey, um, yeah, their, their pre-cons are going for $85, which is like twice as much as pre-cons ever are, and yet you're not calling them pre premium, right? I mean, Blake, I think famously said, right, or infamously said, like, you know, like, oh, can someone in the chat, like, point to me or flag to me, like, where we called this premium? Yeah, you didn't, but you know it is because you're getting those price points up there, and you're saying that, you know what, okay, yeah, we know exactly how much this is gonna cost in the secondary market. We know how exactly how much these cards are worth, and yet, yeah, no, we're not gonna give you more value than we want to. We don't want to drop our price equity unless you're willing to pay for that, all right? You have to pay more for a set that is gonna have more cards that are chase cards. In order for people to wanna buy this set, you need to put those in there, but then you are getting those premium prices, essentially. So yeah, Commander has kinda of got this kind of problem right now where it's like, hey, um, I guess there's a problem if you're not playing budget. If you're playing budget like me, <laughs> not much of a problem. Uh, but you know, you've got the you know the cards that are those demand cards that you know are just going to keep skyrocketing in price because Wizards is going to refuse to reprint them a, a lot, or they are going to reprint them again in a way that they do like Commander Masters. But hey, they're going to jack up that price so that yeah, the demand kind of meets the supply needs that they need. So it's just pretty crazy just in and, and, and just the thought process of this i understand where mark's coming from maybe where mark's trying to get the discussion going be like hey trying to let you see our side of things and like hey like yeah this is why we're doing things this is why this but you're kind of good taking a half measure and not actually saying what it really is and uh i mean yeah why why in the world what does like the power level of a set or the power level of say a pre-con have to do with its price like, what does that have to do with it? Other than you saying, oh, no, 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 more expensive cards. If you take out that and say, yeah, more expensive cards and the, you know, price, yeah, that's what you really mean. You don't mean, oh, okay, cool, yeah, this has, um, you know, Zatalpa in it <laughs> versus this has, you know, another card that, you know, like Zatalpa, I guess is 25 cents, but another card that, you know, might be more expensive, essentially, that maybe it isn't that highly used, but, you know, it's pretty expensive because of supply and demand issues. You're, you're really more so saying, you know, price. You're not saying power level, you're saying price. The, the, the expected price of things because of what kinds of cards are in them, you want a way around that. And Commander is kind of problematic for, for Wizards because yeah, it's causing all these kind of, I guess, friction issues, essentially I would call them, where yeah, there, there's gonna be a lot of argument, there's gonna be a lot of dissonance, uh, like you know our, our user said here. Uh, basically that, hey, um, yeah, players out there kind of know what's going on and you're not actually willing to even really talk about it. You are not willing to actually just say, yeah, we're, um, we're wrong. You know, we, we shouldn't be doing that. But, uh, or, you know, just being upfront on the other side, be like, no, yeah, we're, we're going to, you know, have cards uh, in there that are more expensive reprints. And because of that, we are going to have the price be premium, not because of power level, but because of, hey, we don't want to drop our, our reprint equity. And you know what? I'd have more respect for Wizards if they just came out and said that instead of, jumping around the issue and again, Blake saying something like, again, like, oh yeah, um, can anyone point out to me where that is? Oh, come on, really? Really? You know exactly what you're doing and you're trying to jump around and just PR the issue. And uh, again, uh, I appreciate Mark actually responding to things, but yeah, this this might have been a misstep because um, yeah, that's not, uh, not a great response. <laughs> and one that again, people expect because you know, these days, you know, there's just not a lot of trust between the community and wizards because of you know, things like this. And uh, again, a set that could have been just absolutely so monumental. Again, Commander Legends was huge, right? Commander Legends was massive. And now we've got, you know, Commander's first official reprint set, right? For, specifically for Commander. And it's this giant flop because, hey, uh, everyone's priced out. Again, Commander players, there's a lot of budget conscious Commander players like myself. It's priced out. You're just completely pricing everyone out of these. And the pre-cons being $85 is ridiculous, especially since pre-cons are supposed to be like, you know, an intro product. It's supposed to be like, hey, like, oh yeah, Go grab a pre-con, start playing Commander. Cool. The $40 price point, still decently expensive. I mean, compared to some budget decks that you might be able to make, but still a lot more affordable than um, $85. So yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on all of this. Again, it's just more and more kind of like non-surprising things, I guess, where yeah, Wizards just keeps kind of um, doing what is expected, I guess. Uh, yeah, we don't really expect Wizards to at this point turn it around. 
and be like, you know what? I'm so sorry we were wrong about all these decisions. You know, we're gonna just put our Commander Masters 2 is going to be all your favorite and best reprints from Commander. And uh, instead of, you know, I think I, I, I did an episode where I talked about Enoch Bonkin, right, was in that set. And they're like, well, it's because draft needs to be a thing. We don't care about draft for Commander, okay? We don't. All right, the focus is commander, so get the reprints in there you need. So instead of having Anox Bonkin in there, throw in Preordain. Again, a $3 common versus a 10 cent, two cent common, whatever it is, essentially. So put in value and do not overprice it because again, I mean, commander's your main format, right? Like commander's your main format. You, the, the players deserve, you know, for you to be upfront and honest. And again, if you're not gonna be, it's you're just gonna keep eroding away, you know, that that trust to that, uh, and I think is pretty much non-existent at this point with the community. So try to build some up instead of taking some down. But yeah, let me really comment what your thoughts are on all this. And of course, as always, well, thank you for bearing with me again with this different kind of recording. Um, yeah, hopefully I'm back in the studio soon. Uh, thanks again though, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.